my dear, would you like lasagna or sushi for dinner tonight? Hmm, you're giving me the silent treatment. I guess silence means both. What's the matter? Do you not like both? Oh, I think I understand. You have that same expression. I've been with you so long, yet you still act so surprised to see me. I guess I am rather otherworldly, huh? Like I told you many times before, I really am your guardian angel. Do the wings not convince you? Or the floating? The halo. Or how you are the only one that can see me. Though my ability to affect the physical world proves I am no hallucination, I don't think an hallucination could make you dinner after all. Quite a delectable one, I might add. Way better than what that conniving little neighbor with that discount instant noodle tear. Oh, but I digress. The point is, I am completely real. A dream come true, if I may be so arrogant. For me, anyway. Speaking of dreams, there is something I've been dreaming of asking you. I have a request, you see. How do I put it? Well, uh, maybe it would be better to just show you. Okay, hold on. Okay, here. I plucked one of my feathers for you. I want you to accept this as a gift from me. <laughs> not like that. It looks good on your hair, but that's not what it's for. I want you to eat it. The feather won't harm you, and you won't digest it nor expel it as waste. So it'll be like a part of me will be inside you. Forever. Isn't that just magical? Isn't that, if I may dare say, romantic? A real-life fairy tale. It's just that, remember a few months ago, when you got sick from that virus and then recovered? That was my doing. Uh, the recovering part. Of course, not the sick part. I would never let you come to harm. I will always serve you faithfully, after all. But that virus, that pathogen got to be inside you. I will be honest, my dear. I got very, 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 very jealous. Even though I am forever with you, I still feel too distant. I can never be close enough to you. It's not fair for that bundle of genes that is arguably not even alive to be inside my peerless darling. So close. Well, I am stuck outside here. So, would you do me that favor? Would you kindly eat my feather? Oh, you will? Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If only I had thousand heads to bow to you in unison. Here, let my one head suffice. So? How did it taste? I don't expect it to taste like ambrosia, but if it is even possible... Tasteless. Okay, that is swell then, as long as you didn't suffer from it. Say, I'm really happy I just got to be closer to you, and I'm truly, truly, truly appreciative that you entertain the selfish request of this petty angel. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but I don't just feel physically distant from you. I want to be closer to you emotionally as well. Do you see? I have always barraged you with questions about yourself. Anything that I couldn't learn just from watching you. If you were enamored by a book series, I had to ask you what made it appeal to you. If you brought food, I had inquired whether it was to price, nutritional value, taste, or calories that swayed you. I know everything about you. In fact, I might even know you better than you know yourself. 
Despite this, you haven't shown such an interest in me. Understandable, of course. I am bronze and you are gold. In spite of this, is there anything you would like to ask me? Please, I, I want you to know me even a fraction as much as I know you. Oh, thank you for obliging. A thousand festivals in your honor, my dear. Okay. Ask away. I'll answer anything other than where I hid the bodies, of course. Kidding. I'm kidding. Jeez. Did you really think I would leave a body behind? Hmm. Do I have any hobbies? Hmm. I'm glad you asked. I like writing poetry about you. Of course, I try to write about a variety of things. I attempted other topics, but then I look down at the paper and every time it's overflowing with your name. Oh well, happy little accidents. I tried. <laughs> Would you like me to recite you one that I wrote? Okay, I'll try a short one. You probably don't have time for the epics. <clears throat> Here I go. He saw a tulip in a field, and grinned wide at the sight. With all the seal I could wield, I picked them all throughout the night. When I placed them at your feet, you fainted from the treat. Well, how was it? Not too bad, I hope. Don't suppose I get a Nobel Prize for that, huh? Tough crowd. Maybe next time. How come I just appeared one day, instead of being with you forever? Well, in a way, I have always been with you. It's just that, in the past, I had watched you from heaven. Now, why am I here physically with you instead of watching over you far away from heaven? Now that is quite the question. The simple answer is, I was demoted, in a way. but. I like to think of it as a promotion. It allowed me to be near you, after all. You see, to put it bluntly, um, I was kicked out of heaven. Uh, no, calm down, calm down. It is not as big of a deal as it turns. You aren't going to get angel police or anything like that after us. It's a real thing. I know, wacky, right? Anyway, let me start from the beginning. You see, there was this statue up in heaven. There are a lot of statues, but there was this particular one and it was almost perfect. Almost. I say almost because it almost looked like you. It just needed a few improvements, so I made it perfect. I made it look like you. But then all the other angels were furious when they found out. You defaced the statue. You defaced heaven itself. You're a demon. Blah, blah, yada, yada. I kind of sewn them out after a while. I was really just taking in my craftsmanship, you know? Moving on. I'll spare you the bureaucracy details. But basically, in the end, my punishment was that I got kicked out of heaven and so now... I am here with you. I'm sure those high and mighty angels thought they got rid of a monster. But I'm not a monster, am I? I don't look like a monster, right? Oh, does my appearance displease you? Do I frighten you? Would it help if I looked more like a mortal? If anything about my form displeases you, I will change it. If it is my halo, I will dim it. If it is my eyes, I will saw them shut. If it is my wings, I will cut them. Okay, okay. You don't think I look like a monster? That's good. You should see those biblically accurate angels. Now that's a monster. I'll be honest with you. 
I'm never getting back into heaven. But that's okay. Because you're my heaven. And besides, I've seen heaven and... Jake's kind of a tourist trap, if you know what I mean. Really overhyped. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you get disheartened? Oh, don't be. Tell you what. We can make a new heaven here. Our own little heaven. With blackjack. But not hookers, though, because I get jealous. We'll start with this room. And then this home. I'll do anything to make your life heaven. I mean, anything. I'll be anything you want me to be. If you want me to be your friend, I'll be your friend. If you want me to be your sister, I'll be your sister. And if you want me to be more, well, then I'll be more. But one thing I will never be is I will never be a traitor to you. Even if you killed someone, I would hide the body. Well, vaporize it, actually. Way more efficient. Not that you need to kill anyone. But if you did... A standing offer. Are all the other angels like me? What? No. No, of course not. They aren't half as competent. Let me tell you a story. So in heaven, there was this one angel lamenting over how she let the person she was supposed to be protecting get killed. <laughs> she just kept sobbing and sobbing. Being a good little angel, I waited until I was out of earshot to burst out laughing. What a failure. You mean, how could she let them die? Hello, you had one job. It was during a civil war too. I mean, isn't that when you should be paying extra attention? Get your guy out or something? And if I recall, he died from a stray mortar? While he was on the toilet. Talk about an embarrassing way to die. The angel couldn't protect his dignity, much less his life. There are many angels like them, but I am different. I shall never allow you to suffer shame nor pain. Mm, what makes me love you? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, it is in my nature as a guardian angel. Just like a mother has an innate love for a child. Kind of. A trashy mother could hate her child. I've never heard of a guardian angel hating their target. Also, no human is capable of the degree of love I display. You could stab me 72 times with a spiral knife, and I would not like you any less. Though, I would be a bit confused. Even if I weren't your angel... I would still love you, though. There is no way all this affection is just from my nature or biology or whatever. You see, before you were born, I had seen your soul. It was brighter and bigger than all the others. And from that moment on, I knew it. You are mine. Not in a Faustian bargain sold your soul kind of way. More like, listen. I'm trying to say I really love you, capiche? <clears throat> well, I really enjoyed our little talk. Although, it was mostly me talking and you looking highly disturbed. But, you must be starving. I'll get dinner ready, and we can continue this over a nice meal. And don't worry about any consequences from the whole statue thing. Angel unions are very strong.